You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. You just cannot get the staff these days. They're talking in my ear and they're just saying nonsense. That's actually oh. direction you're supposed to do. It really? Yeah. Mm. Hello, welcome to Chewing the Cuds. Are you sure that they're professionals? Professionals, yes, paid no. Ah, that'll be it then. Pay peanuts. <laughs> what have you got for us tonight, Mike? Well, I have a story about the dangers of pooping, and then we'll get all scientific in that science, that is. And we even have a game to play in our Game of the Week. But on screen now, you can see our social media contact info. Just look for at the Cud TV. And as names of people have reached out, go along the bottom of the screen, we go over to Miss and the Showbiz. <laughs> Are you ready for the show, Biz? Yeah. You know how we like a Netflix show on this show? I, I, I am aware of the we, Netflix. We do talk yes. about a good few shows that are on Netflix that we get excited we, about. We do like a box set. But we do have to wait for a lot of them sometimes. We talk about what's coming and it's, it's going to be months and months and months away. Mm -hmm. There's a show on Netflix at the moment mm -hmm. that is already out. Yay. And it's quite exciting. It is called... The Dead Boy Detectives. I love this show. Oh, have you already seen it? I love this show. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting quite excited about this. It's so good. I I haven't actually started watching it myself yet, but I, I've got it on my list to look at because it's Neil Gaiman. Mm -hmm. And it's the whole Sandman DC universe stuff going on. And uh -huh. it's got a, a bit of crossover with uh, Doom Patrol as well, because okay. one of the characters from that's in it. And as you can see, our, our, our favourite White Lotus star, Lucas Gage, is also in it. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently playing the weirdly sexual Cat King. Yes. It's not weirdly sexual, it's very sexual. Oh, okay. Oh, my lord, yes. It's the first time I've been sexually aroused by pussy. I've got a lot to look forward to, though. <laughs> yes, you need to watch it. The gallery, the gallery have started to stream it already from the sound of it. <laughs> well, I have heard some really good um, reviews about this coming in. And we talked a while back about Bridgerton's new series. Mm -hmm. And how in the early series they'd done a bit of gay baiting with the trailers. And now we're actually having gay. And now we're finally having a bit of gay. We were worried that this might be the same thing because apparently the trailer for this was overtly sexual. Mm -hmm. And I have watched the trailer for it and it is a bit... Uh-huh. But is it going to pay off or is it just... Yes. Uh, well, the reviews say that uh, it is and... Yes, it pays off. I've cancelled my premium membership of Pornhub. Is it that good? That good. I don't, I've not cancelled that membership. <laughs> He's a liar. That's a, He's an absolute liar. Um, I'll tell you what he reminded me of when I watched it, though. Like, like this is going to show my age. It kind of reminded me of a cool, slick, emo, shameless, emo, shamelessly emo version of Randall and Hopkirk's Deceased. Do you not remember that show? When was that on? Um, it was in the 1970s, but they, they had a... Re they Pre-born, right, okay. Reeves and Mortimer did, did, did a, a, a revamp of it in the 90s. Okay. Randall and Hopkirk, deceased. Keep saying it, I mean, it happened. <sighs> it was a very, very good show. Okay, so let's just... The gallery have informed me that it's a 60s show that was repeated in oh. the 70s. Oh, my lords, I'm old. But, yeah, it reminded me of that show. And, and yeah, it did look very, very slick and very, very sexy. And I need some Kleenex. It's also pissy funny, right? Um, there's a bit where they've, they've trapped some, I think it's trolls in a jar. Mm -hmm. Right? And this, not trolls, um, like fairies or something in a jar. And they are livid that they're in this jar. They're saying, oh, we'll keep them as pets. And they go, you can't keep us in a f***ing jar. That's against our rights. And it, they're having a proper go about being trapped. It's hilarious. Tinkerbell with a potty mouth. Pretty much, yeah. Right? But they're going, mm. once they get out of this jar, I'm going to f*** you up. And it's just, it is brilliant. Well, I'm not one for such fantasy things. Anyway. You spend your weekends in a dungeon. I do. I really do. That's, that's then, absolutely up my street, to be you, honest. And then you play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> 
In other news, a bit more, a bit more serious. Sometimes we do a little bit of politics on this show. <laughs> You're going to send me off on a rant. I'm not going to send you off a rant. We're not talking about spoilers and Doctor Who, which yeah. Russell T Davies has corrected you on, by the way. <sighs> what do you mean he's corrected? How can he correct me on spoilers when I'm not seeing it? I sent you a link. Anyway, we'll move. I can't see that. You can't, that why can't you see that? Me because you have to be a member of the group. And as you try and mem- become a member of the group, it says, this may contain spoilers. Why the hell am I going to sign up for it? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so we're going to do a little bit of politics now. Okay. Um, it's showbiz news, but uh, there's the news as well. So, remember up until 2000... Mm. And it, I, 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 I remember, but it still shocks me. LGBTQ mm-hmm. not allowed in the army. Uh, you weren't allowed to be out in LGBTQIA+. Plus. Well, there's the whole um, don't say you're gay kind of thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't ask, don't tell is the phrase, if I remember correctly. Uh-huh. And, yeah, officially, because you weren't allowed to be a great big bummer in the uh, army. No bum boys in our brigade, I believe the phrase was. No <laughs> That was on the poster, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kitchener wants you <laughs> to not be a bum boy in our brigade. <laughs> so there are obviously gay people who were in the Army, yeah, yeah. the Navy, in the Air Force, mm-hmm. and a lot of them are veterans now. And there's now a charity out there. Uh, they're called, if I remember, Fighting with Pride. Okay. And they've managed to get the government to apologise and sort out a memorial for them. They've been awarded £350,000 from the government to create a memorial for the National Memorial Arboretum um, awful, in Staffordshire. Hey. There we go. Oh, there it is. Well, there's an example. I don't think I've built it yet. Because the memorial is expected to be unveiled in May 2025. Not far off, next year. The thing is, that's... Oh, it's going to take a while to grow in. <laughs> the thing is, that's that's a lovely gesture, and it's it somewhere is. veterans and families of people who've passed can go and memorialise. Um, for a lot of veterans, though, and again, it's only 2000, so not that long ago, the effect that it's had on them... Mm-hmm and the way it's impacted their lives. Most people who've affected from the ban have suffered poverty inflicted on them, the loss of their careers, crippling debt, poor housing, social isolation, and living with poor health and their well-being just being shattered by being kicked out of the army for being a woofter. So this has had a tangible effect on them. So they had this whole... um, report on it, an investigation, and there's been several recommendations to have come out of that. Out of that, they had 49 recommendations. Do you know how many have been done so far? One. A bit more than that to give the government its due, to be fair. Two. 28. Okay. So, not bad, but not all. Um, So they're still fighting, fighting with pride, uh, to get all of those recommendations completed. So people who are still around and still suffering can have some recompense for how they were treated back in the day. Okay. Are you into fashion? Yes. There is a London-based label called Duke and Dexter. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're quite a cult favourite. They are a brand known for loafers with yep. uh, like nice hand-painted designs on them. They're now going to release a fashion label. Oh. Mm. They are now bringing out some ready-to-wear collections with an aesthetic taking inspiration from vintage motorsport designs. Oh. Uh, they actually look quite good. Um, for my tastes and fashion things, uh, the collection f- for the collection of you who are chasing the adrenaline of a white knuckle drive, uh, as well as promising the same unparalleled level of quality as the popular loafers, the T-shirts, hoodies, jackets have a boxy, oversized style in white, charcoal, grey, oatmeal and black. Oatmeal. Yeah, they're actually all Just my colours. They're the ones I like. I, they're actually my favourite colours. Um, I'm not too sure I will be shopping for anything because they're all priced £160 each. Okay. And the uh, black vintage style racing jacket is complete with the brand's logo. Uh-huh. That's priced at £300. Do you get him in it? 
Um, I don't think so. I, what do you, I don't really... One of the other things I struggle with getting clothing, where they've got the brand all over them. I don't like that. I like it when I'm not a walking poster board for the place that I've bought it from, because I don't really give a monkeys about labels. Anyway, that's everything for this week. Well, thanks for that, Mist. Always nice to know that um, when you wish upon the stuff. Um, I do not buy my clothes from Wish. I'm trendy. Next is Mike in the Buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mr. Mike. Now let's see what he's managed to dredge up from the deep, dark, stinky areas of the internet. It's Mike with the buzz. How do you feel about insects? Creepy crawlies. And flying things. Mm, depends. Midges. Irritating, but yeah. Okay. They are irritating, okay? Uh, with the recent weather being warm and wet, mm -hmm. we have seen an explosion of midges. Not an actual explosion, not an explosion. <laughs> um, but the population has increased dramatically because mm -hmm. right? they have quite a quick life cycle mm -hmm. and able to mass produce. Um, one particular part of the world is suffering more than everywhere else, though. Why? Because, and where? Because they're getting a lot more than, than everywhere else. It's just the perfect climates. And I think it's it's nominative determination. This place is called Midgem. Midgem. Midgem is beset by midges. It is indeed. Um, in Berkshire, so they can afford it. Um, but it, I, everything is covered in midges. Why? Because they've had a population explosion. Well, uh, yes, I understand. But why they're... have there been a population explosion, specifically in Berkshire? It, it's just because it, it's had the, uh, the best weather for midges to procreate. That's how they procreate. <laughs> they walk around doing this. <laughs> Here, have some of my procreative juices. No, they just do that and they find out they're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> the immaculate conception of midges. There's that much sperm in the oh. air. That nearly went horribly wrong, didn't it? <laughs> Smashing the setup. <laughs> um, that much semen in the air flying around. Because it's a flinging about like that, yeah. Both hands. <laughs> Very well, unlike some people. Um, but yeah, it, it's so bad that even the town sign, the, the reason why it's fallen off is because it's that heavy with midges. Why are the midges all on one side of the sign? Because they're like that side of the sign. They saw the sign, it opened up their eyes. <laughs> I, yeah, I caught that. I did. Ooh. Ace of Base. You can barely recognise me. I'm so sad. <laughs> wow. um, Some people never left the 90s. You know, and that play, includes me. I was going to say, I have to play Uza Kazoo and you go, that's from after 2000, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, basically the, the residents are, are worried about what they can do because they just go out and it's just swarms of mid midges everywhere. I still don't understand though. Like, okay, the weather has been particularly good for the... But why located on one specific town? Of, if, but weather isn't going to affect one specific town. They have more, I don't know, ponds per capita. I feel somebody hasn't done enough research on this story to yep. understand the science. But if only we had somebody on this show that understood science. We don't. I just f***ing do uh, find on YouTube. <laughs> I literally Google science experiments to do for kids. You just uh, the lab coat is just for show, isn't it? It's not a lab coat half the time. It's just a white shirt. And I feel like I've been lied to. But yeah. Anyway, um, moving on. How safe do you feel having a poo? Depends on what I've eaten the night before. Okay. How, how, when you're going to the bathroom, how secure do you feel that you're going to come out of the bathroom alive? Pretty secure. Fairly really secure. I, I live all by myself. Okay. I'm just going to put this might change with the next story. Okay. There's a gentleman in Canada mm -hmm. um, almost died going to the toilet and having a poop. How hard was he straining? It wasn't about the straining. It was the fact he was attacked from beneath. Ooh. By a rat. Ooh. Nom, 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 nom. 
Oh, I remember a horror film. That, you know when you're a young kid and you watch a horror film before you should do? Critters. I think it was Critters 2. One with Leonardo DiCaprio in it, where he's really, really young. And, and yeah. Old bite of the bum. And the balls. Mm. Well, there's a rat um, basically hospitalised a man from Canada because basically the, the rat bit his bum and other areas. Right. I feel that this might be a stage photograph and that's not the actual rat, because that's quite a cute rat. He doesn't look like he'd hurt anyone. He'd probably just gently nuzzle your, your bollocks. I think the rat would gently nuzzle him. That rat would do. The rat you're describing is obviously a monster with big, gnawy teeth. That one's cute. Wouldn't, wouldn't harm a fly, that one. So he's hospitalised that the, when the rat bit him, it left bacteria behind and he didn't get it treated and he had sepsis, mm -hmm. right? And it got quite bad before he was taken to hospital. Um, so he may have died from a bacterial infection. From I, I'm actually making jokes about somebody who's died. That's not good. He's probably got relatives who are recently bereft. He's not dead. He could have almost died. Oh, he almost died? Almost died. Well, that's all right then. Let's just take the piss out of him. Yeah. Why did he have rats in his loo? Rip the shit out of him, I believe the phrase is. <laughs> <laughs> like, the rat tried to. Um, the rat made its way up the, the, the toilet drain pipe. Because right? toilets in the rest of the world aren't the same as we have here. So like in the States, it, it's like literally a, a bowl full of water that gets disposed of. So, much, so wasteful. We've done various plumbing on this show more than I really thought... I'd ever really have to in light entertainment. It's because I'm hyper masculine. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, um, if you also like to be a bit on the bottom so you go to hospital, <coughs> or do something called a jacuzzi that Mr was talking about, <laughs> uh, why not share that with us at Good TV? A Paul Cousy. Huh? A Paul Cousy. I don't... Yeah. Um... Moving on, this brings us nicely to our story of the week. It is not Mr. Poir, a warm bowl of water sticking someone's testicles in it and blowing because he's recently said, not had it for a little while. You go to the gym, don't you? Yes, as you can tell from my sportswear. I own sportswear as well, it doesn't mean that. Um, some people call that fe fetish wear. Um, it's a, a story about the dangers of the gym. I'm being very, very foreboding this week. Um, what? Don't try and put me off the gym. I, I love the... I put you off the gym. I was going to talk about a danger of the gym, and you then get to choose whether you still go. Usually when they talk about the danger of a gym, they're talking about me. A sexual nuisance, I believe they call it. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Um, so, this is about a woman who was exercising in the gym quite happily mm -hmm. until someone bit her finger off. Someone bit her finger? Someone bit her finger off. Like, took the end off. Like, more than just a tip. Right? And the reason for this is because they were taking too long on the um, cardio equipment. How long's too long? I go for a double whammy on the elliptical. A double whammy? Yeah. It's, 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 set, for, it's set for 30 minutes and I have to start it again so I can go for a full hour. Because I, 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 enjoy, I enjoy the elliptical. Is that why you walk funny? It is. <laughs> it's certainly not from getting any action. Anyway. Oh, not from a person. I've seen you near that rising ballad. Um, it's just true, isn't it? <laughs> Why are you giggling? It's true. I've stumbled across the truth. It's not true. You've put 50p in and squatted over a rising ballad and waited, haven't you? <laughs> Is that why you've got that car registration plate with you at all times? <laughs> oh, you can. AMPR. <laughs> it's on. Like I'd rise up. <laughs> Anyway, who... Well, well, ribbed at the top. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, um, so she, she was on there, so the um, lady went over. She's in the 60s, very unhappy that she's taking too long on, on the cross trainer. Hang on, the, the lady on, in her 60s was on the cross trainer or the lady on the, in her 60s was the attacker? Was the biter. Yeah, basically said, get off this machine, I want to use it. And the person said, I'm quite clearly using it. And so she bit her finger off. It escalated, it went from zero to 60 very quickly. It's not even going to be roid rage with a 60-year-old, is it? It might be. Low dose of trend. 
But yeah. That's, oh, I, I mean, I've seen some bad behaviour in the gym. Mm -hmm. I mean, my sort of, I do love my uh, fellow gym goers, um, but when they start shouting at Tommy Robinson, you do kind of want to punch them in the face. Um, yeah. It's probably a milkshake over them, isn't it, for Tommy Robinson? Oh, yeah, that did happen to you. <laughs> yeah, like, people throw a milkshake over him. Absolutely deserved it as well. Um, why, why are we giving them a milkshake? I don't think they deserve that. A bottle of pee, yes. Did he get thrown over him? Yeah. Milkshake, I've been saying my friend. No, that's another story. We're not no, going what? to that. Um... <laughs> felched by a milkshake? No, not felched by a milkshake. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you off camera. Okay. There are some things I actually leave off camera. Um, yeah, there are. The, the, there's very bad behaviour in gyms. I think that needs reporting. Yeah. I just thought it was really interesting that someone could bite a finger off. That's dedication because there's a bone in there. It's like sucking a pork chop dry. It's like oh. <laughs> you've seen me eat. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's less delicate than that. <laughs> uh, you take your dentures and get stuck. Just me sure she might not have dentures. I know, but I'm going for assumptions. Okay, and your assumptions do they make you yeah, look like a dickhead? But um, that's all from the buzz this week. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Um, yeah. I'll look out for a 60-year-old trying to bite my finger off. Hopefully it's just my finger. Anyway, stick around as we have coming up a game to play in our Game of the Week. Welcome back, and yes, you lucky people, you're watching Chewing the Cud. We're going to play the Gobby Game Show, Fluid Edition. And this one is for the man who recently had a new personal assistant. It's Mike. No, wrong kind of PA. Game of the Week. Mike, have you assumed the position? I have. Are you ready for the game? I have. More importantly, are you ready for the game? <laughs> I'm not too sure. Oh, no, I've just lost it. You've, lo you've lost what? The game. No, 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 no. Can I have a guess from the gallery, please? Because no. that was nonsense to me. It's it's from the nineties. Oh no, no, please no. S Club Seven. It's Vogue by Madonna. Vogue. That was Vogue. That's Vogue. That was Vogue. Even the gallery got it wrong. They thought it was Don't Stop Moving. No, they're just singing that song, because that's one of the songs they like to sing. <laughs> I, I did school theatre for several years, and they used to have to sing S Club 7 every blooming day. Okay. It drove me nuts. Yeah, that was the song, Reach for the Stars, every day. For years, every day, trying to entertain little children and make them think that they had cool, happy lives. Reach for the stars. They'll all be in their mid-twenties now. Yeah, it's thirties, you were right the first time. <laughs> when you thought, I want to say thirties, no, that can't be right. They will be in their thirties now. Which year was this? Do you know, do you know, do you know what I also had to sing in front of them for, uh, during panto season? When I when I was uh, sheriff of Nottingham as as a panto villain, I'm Henry VIII. That I am. No, no. This is for school children. No. Sex bomb. Okay. Yeah. To children, I had to sing sex bomb to children. It was a different time. Okay. Next one. Oh, 
<laughs> Gallery, Gallery, help me! Help me, please! Is that your guess? It didn't sound. It didn't sound a damn thing. A bit. It didn't sound a damn thing like that. Love Shack the B fifty twos. Correct. That, that was actually what it was. That's what it was. Wow. That's one for the gallery. The gallery found the niche. The, I think they've. I think they've probably been watching you for far too long. <laughs> Take a chance on me. Do my very best. I ain't no lie. By who? Do you know I, I, I used to not like ABBA um, militantly because I like rock music and I, okay. ABBA are just cheap. Then I actually listened to ABBA Gold and it is genius. You just can't deny it. They're just absolutely bloody brilliant. Okay, it wasn't the ABBA version I was doing now. Oh, God. Are we doing specific versions It was now? the erasure. If we're going in that level, I'm... You're not that good. I am that good. Because the gallery gets in it. For those who are playing along at home, um, so I hope you're doing better than me. So I actually watch it? No. No one plays along at home. For those of you who are playing at home watching the repeat at four o'clock in the morning after having come back from some naughty nightclub, put on a porno instead. Come on, guys. I'm the scout man. Okay, I'm not going to kink shame, but what was the song? Uh, Scatman, Scatman John. Okay, thank you. I know that song very, very well. And, and, and for those who've played Dungeons and Dragons with me, I am known as the Scatman DM. <laughs> also known, aka, as the Chuckle DM. <laughs> I think I know what it is, but that was quite funny. Bob. Um, I, 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 is it Tony Braxton? I think that's who sang it. I'm not too sure. And um, I think the song "Shy Guy." It was "Shy Guy" by Diana King. <sighs> I thought I'd get the wrong song, singer. Okay. Yeah, well, it's okay. It's close. Do I get half a point or do I get one point That's... out of two? Okay, next one. There's not a proper scoring system in this game. Nobody wins. <laughs> Least of all the audience. Nobody wins. <laughs> choose to watch this. That's how they're watching it now. <sighs> it felt... All right, next one. Stored it from Wish. Macarena. Hey, Macarena. <laughs> the gallery enjoyed that one a little bit too they much. And now I've got a burst eardrum. You can tell the gallery haven't been out since like 1999. <laughs> I can do the chorus if that would help. Uh, yeah, please give it the chorus. That that's really gonna solve things. If you are playing along at home. They're all shouting at this. They're all going, it's this! And you, why are you not getting it? It's quite simple. Or, or well, let's, if it's that simple, the gallery should get it. Gallery guess, please. No, it's they don't have a clue either. To believe by A1. A1? Do you remember A1? Uh, 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 it's a spot. It's a source for steak in America. It is. It's also a group that happened in, in England. They had one song. There were four gentlemen. One had floppy hair. 
wasn't one of wasn't one of the, wasn't one of them behind the wolf wolf wolfy banana song. Eurovision, a couple of years back. Give that wolf a banana before he eats my granny. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, wasn't that one of the guys from it was. one? They had more than one song. They had a couple. Well, that was their hit that you didn't get. Right, next one. I didn't say I pay attention to the songs. I might pay attention to the posters in the magazines when they're half day. Maya he, Maya ha, Maya he, Maya ha ha. By whom? I have no idea what the title of the song or who did it is. It's some Euro trash pop crap. It's brilliant. It was Russian. Russian? Uh, it was Russian. The group were called Ozun. I wonder where they are now. Probably well, was, in a gulag sorry, somewhere from being far too camp. It was Romanian. And they were dancing on the, the plane going, No ma, no ma, hey. No ma, no ma, no ma, no ma, no ma hey. Kika Bella, she is rather starving day. I actually can speak a foreign language because of that song. But only to say the lyrics to that song. Eurasia. And? Uh, Lay All Your Love On Me, which it is was the cover of ABBA. ABBA and Lay All Your Love On Me. You weren't doing the Eurasia version? No, I was doing the ABBA version. And you call yourself a puff? I do. It's painful, honestly. The gallery have got it. Have the gallery got it? Okay, gallery, got gallery. Can I have a gallery guess, please? Do you know what? I understand. I, I, I understand that song even less now. E even with a gallery guess, I, I, that that's actually made it worse. The gallery are talking out of their bottoms. No, they're singing the lyrics. I, I, yeah, but I, they're lyrics I've never heard before. I, I don't, I'm fed up with a lot of them, quite frankly. Um, anyway, enough of that. Let's move on. Uh, come back and we will have Mike in. That's science, that is. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we're going to be educated. It's Mike in. that science, that is. That's science, that is. How do you feel about yoghurt? Or yoghurt, depending on where you're from. You're probably yoghurt person. If it's warmed up and thrown across my back. That's a really homophobic joke from Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, are you going to tell the whole joke now? Uh, no, I can't remember it. <laughs> How do you know if a gay man's faked an orgasm? He's throwing a quarter of yoghurt over your back. Um, so, yoghurt is expensive. So I've given you a little pot of yoghurt. You give me a little pot of yoghurt. Okay. This little pot of yoghurt costs 75p. 75p for that? 75p much. for that. Cost of living's gone crazy. It has, right? Okay. And that's what? It's like 100 mil. I bet they don't give enough much to the farmers from this either, do they? No. Okay. <coughs> As a comparison, a pint of milk. Do you know how much a pint of milk is? Uh, £1.20. 90p for that pint of milk. 90p? Yeah. Right. So this is actually you know, sizably different and cheaper kinds of scale. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, your penny per portion. Yes. Okay. Now what we're going to do is the thing about yogurt is magical stuff because it's alive. It's it's like bio yogurt. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. You stick a, a lot of electric around it and make a horror movie. It's alive, alive. Um, so what that means is you can make more yoghurt from yoghurt. That science is, has taken a dark turn. A dark turn. <laughs> it's got all a bit Frankenstein's monster, hasn't it? Oh, a little bit, yeah. Um, so what you want to do is you want to take your yoghurt, or yoghurt. You right? do. Okay, and we have Greek-style yoghurt here. Mm. And none of this non-fat, low-fat bowl. It's the... 
the, the, the good stuff. Give it a good old slop in. Do we uh, want all of it or just... You want as much as you can. Can I use my spatula? You can have a go using your spatula, I suppose. <clears throat> I suppose I don't know what that is. Oof, it's, it's a, the spatula, it's a bit too big for the old... Wow, well, I've got mine in. Does you know why? Persistence. <laughs> Persistence and a little bit of care. <sighs> a little, little kiss if you need to. Right, okay. So there we have the delicious, lovely yoghurt. It is quite nice. I do love Greek yoghurt. Mm. Okay, now, what I've done before the show, mm -hmm. okay, is I have popped this milk into a microwave. Oh, okay. I'm glad I didn't drink the milk. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, I want that. The reason why we do that is it's to make sure that it's got no active bacteria in it already. Because mm -hmm. in the yoghurt, there is bacteria, the good bacteria. And that's why it's alive. And that's why it's alive. Alive. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do is we want to add some of the milk to the yoghurt. How, how much is a sum? Well, we're going we're gonna to do it in stages. Okay. Okay, so it's a little bit at a time. But all of it eventually, because we're going to make a pint of yoghurt. Oh, so a little bit and a stir. A little bit and a stir? A little bit and a stir. Again, me with the fluids. Uh -huh. um, above all the electricals. You are just each week trying to kill me. Yes. But what you'll notice is as you add the liquid, the, it doesn't get necessarily that much thinner to start with. So I need to add more liquid. So you need to add more liquid. And you're just going to basically add the entire pint. Because we're making a pint of yoghurt. Okay, and once you get to a, a, a good consistency, you can just dump the whole thing in. Okay. Okay. When you say good consistency, what do you... So once, you, once you've noticed, you can add it in quite freely and it's well mixed. You just add... You mean when it's watery enough that it's yeah. almost as watery as the milk, just shove the rest of the milk in? Exactly, yeah. Oh, just because he's wearing a lab coat and he does the science bit, he thinks he can use all the technical jangly words. Like consistency. Like consistency. He thinks he's clever. There we go. It's all a bit sloppy now. Okay, cool. So you've added your full pint, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, I've whacked it all in. Now what I want you to do is you should have a mason jar. I do have a mason jar. Because what you want to do is you want to pour the liquid into the mason jar. Over all the... Can, do I have a funnel? No. You're, can't, you're seriously trying to kill me. What? No, you just do it carefully. So watch, watch how I do and then you do too. Okay, so watch me first. Mm -hmm. What have I done already that you've not done? Taking the spatula out. <sighs> no, if, then it, it shouldn't spill this way. Okay, and then it's lip to lip. Lip to lip. Okay. Let, let me show you and then do it. I... Lip to lip, then a tilt. A lip to lip and then a tilt. And then a quick pour. Like that. I do. I, I. I. feel I'm going. Going to go horribly wrong with this, but you, you didn't. You didn't do a quick pour. You did a jerky pour. I got. If I reach down here and suddenly explode, well, don't reach down there then. Where's my tish? Where's my tissues? Right. Look! 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 Look at this disaster. If I can't fold a napkin swan, how am I supposed to fill a mason jar full of milk? Milk and yoghurt. Now, technically, all yoghurt. <sighs> well, okay. if, 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 if there's a health and safety issue uh, and, uh, and I die for electricals... That's your fault for not following a co um, cohesive instruction, because I showed you how funnel. to do it. It's all I ask, a funnel. Week after week, we do these liquidy-based nonsense. And this is the bits first time we've asked for a funnel. I, I, could, I could do with a funnel. It's all I ask, not to die. Have you died? Oh. Have you died? No. Not yet. But right, close your mason jar up. Stop your bittering. <laughs> Can I have some more tissues? No. Yeah. The rest of the just tissues. wait. Um, so now we. <laughs> We're just going to leave this somewhere warm, okay? Because what's going to happen is the bacteria need to, to uh, basically germinate, grow, and expand. Don't mind me, I'm just doing a bit of tidying up. 
from the mess you made. From the mess you made me make? I showed you how to do it without making a mess. You chose to make a mess. I did not choose to make a mess. You just failed, which is like <laughs> choosing to make a mess. Um, so you keep Funnel. it somewhere warm, okay, and literally overnight this will become full Greek yogurt. Overnight? Overnight. Like well, six how hours. We get, well, well uh, is, are you doing a bit of a here's the one we prepared earlier? No. Because I haven't prepared one earlier, okay? But what you can keep doing is you can keep adding to this one. So every time you're running low, you take some of the yoghurt that you've made out, do, redo it with some more milk, and you've basically got infinite yoghurt. Okay. The yoghurt bacteria is so strong as well that they used to use it for thrush, because that's a bacterial infection. There's still people that know use that for thrush. Okay. Um, most people use the over-the-counter medication that isn't yogurty these days. Um, don't use the you good tissues. You don't know some of the uh, very hippy dippy ladies that I know. Don't use the good tissues. There's, there's napkins all over the place. I uh, I asked. I've asked for a puddle. I've should... asked for napkins. It's there. And you provided nothing. Please use the good tissues. Anyway, I'm going to touch um, the electrical bit now. If I die, this is the moment. Just, you just know, don't touch the electrical cap bit. Capture it for posterity. <laughs> I'm alive! Like the yoghurt. <laughs> um, and so you can just keep basically making your own yoghurt for just the price of a pint of milk. Well, that's that's handy to know in, in cost of living crisis. Exactly. And it's not just handy to know, that's science, that is. That's science, that is. Made yoghurt. What's wrong with you now? I'll not be having it on my cereal. Why not? I, 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 I don't trust you. <laughs> That's as simple as that. I just don't trust you. I didn't make... It's not like I've spat in it. You've opened everything yourself. I just don't trust you. Why not? Because, well, yours has got bits in it. Yeah, well... Don't eat mine, then. Well, that's, uh, that's, no, that's your bit, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thief. I I'm sat here waiting for the, the camera shot. Anyway, follow, I'm going to take the lines. Follow the script. Don't follow the script. Follow the script. The script's the same every week. It's not in yellow. <laughs> you kicked off when it wasn't in yellow. It's in yellow. Now it's now in white. I'm just going to read it anyway. That's you ignoring direction. That's nothing to do with me. I can't blame those two. Those two are being quite as church by the <laughs> moment. Oh, now, now they are. <laughs> now they are. Well, that's almost the end of the show for this week. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV in all the usual places. And don't forget, we are on TikTok too. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. TikTok too tells like a country. It does TikTok too. Like, oh, where you go on your holidays? Oh, oh TikTok, TikTok too. too. Yeah, where else did you go? Finger roller. Ooh. And Bangarola. 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 Well. Bangarola. What oh, flight are we on? Oh, flight number 6969. Oh, that's all right then. 469? Yeah, 469. Oh, I've, I've, yeah, I've been on flight 469. <laughs>